Greetings, hunters. As a crossbow enthusiast, I'm used to aiming at the moon for my long-range shots to land anywhere near my target. This hasn't changed in Hunt 1896 with the inclusion of bullet drop. However, since many of you are likely not used to this vertical adjustment yet, I wanted to demonstrate exactly how high each rifle has to aim to hit a target a fixed distance away. I will go through every weapon of the marksman and sniper variety, starting with long ammo, then medium, then compact. In between, I'll break down the positives and negatives of each group. All weapons will target the same dummy at around 225 meters, and the hunter I'll use will have iron eye, scope smith, and steady aim perks. Thank you very much for watching, and if you have any thoughts, please put them in the comments below. When it comes to long ammo, Spitzer is king. We all knew this. This isn't a surprise to anyone. It's probably just a surprise in terms of how high you have to aim for each of the different Spitzer variants. Mosin comes in second, and the Lil' Bell, of course, comes in first. The Lil' Bell is as close to a head tap as you can at this range, and you just have to do a little bit of elevation above your target in order to hit them. Of note is the Martini Henry. I don't know who at Crytek was injured by the Martini Henry or had gotten hit by the Martini Henry so many times to put this level of hate on this gun, but you have to aim almost an entire body length above the target to have a chance at hitting the head. I mean, good luck. It's, it's the worst of the group by far without even question. For medium ammo, pretty much all of the guns are the same, except for the outliers being the Vetterly being by far the worst, and the Springfield High Velocity being the best. The downside of the Springfield High Velocity, obviously it is a one-shot gun. You miss, you have to reload, that person is probably not going to be standing there anymore, you have to find them again and shoot your second shot. Now the nice thing is you have a very minimal bullet drop for the Springfield, whereas the Vetterly, again, like the Martini Henry, has almost a full body length. For the compact group, the Frontier High Velocity and Infantry High Velocity dominate without even a question. The combination of the amount of rounds you can put down range, as well as the very, very minimal uh, height differential that you have to put in place, means that these guns are incredibly deadly at range. Um, are they as deadly as the LaBelle? I mean, that's up for debate. The LaBelle is just fast and strong. What the downside is, is boy is it expensive. So when we look at these three, you have to weigh that option. You have to weigh the amount of money that you are going to spell, spend on the LaBelle with Spitzer, and is it worth the speed that you are going to lose when looking at the amount of bullets that you can put down for the Frontier and the Infantry. I know it's not that much of a difference because the LaBelle has 10, but still, you have to keep that in mind. So when it comes to my top three, this is it. 
We have the Frontier High Velocity, we have the Infantry High Velocity, and we have the LaBelle Spitzer. In my mind, I think just due to cost, the Frontier and the Infantry are going to win out over the LaBelle. In terms of performance, LaBelle is the king. It's, it always has been, it always will be. Um, and that's just the way it is. But again, we have to go back and, and talk about the Martini Henry because the, the poor Martini Henry, just why? Why did they do this? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Uh, but anyway, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. I hope you have a great time out in, uh, in Hunt Showdown. And thank you very much for listening to me babble about rifles for this long. I really do appreciate it. Take care.